say hi to everybody. Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani, Microsoft Business Apps MVP. Thank you for joining the call today. And Thomas, pause the track. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? <laughs> you almost say it right. Hi, I'm Thomas Poshitek, uh, Poland, Warsaw. Uh, yes, I'm also Business Applications MVP, and I'm really glad to see all of you here today with us. Okay, the intent for this particular um, webinar was actually pretty straightforward, is that I want to go out and do a monthly series of webinars where we go out and cover what was actually released for Power Virtual Agents in the previous month. But we haven't done one since the general availability was launched. And I realized that we probably need to do a little bit of a level set and we can then go out and catch everybody up to this month. And then we'll actually start going forward from there. Uh, between MBAS and Build, we actually should see a lot of features. All these features, by the way, are actionable today that we're actually walking through, me, Thomas, Reza. Um, and so this is stuff that you should be able to get work. In either case, if you haven't started playing with Power Virtual Agents, it's the new fourth pillar in our Power Platform. Uh, it probably lives up to that name of less code, more power, or no code, more power, because you can actually do most everything with no code. Now, um, with custom canvases that I showed last night and Rez is going to show today, there is some high code interactions that you can take advantage of, but you certainly don't have to. Um, okay, so um, these slides, the one that I think is the most interesting is actually came from a support background where I actually used to do, at one point, I actually answered 140 Excel phone calls in one day. So I would go out and say, hello, welcome to Microsoft product support. How can I help you today? 140 of those. And it turns out 66% of those people would rather have not picked up the phone and talked to Chuck. I know as, as hard as that is on me, they would actually have rather got out and just got their answer directly from a, you know, a natural conversational interface. So this is a way for people who don't have you know, the Azure bot framework skills to create one in a high code way to go out and, and give those answers and let their own customers not have to create bots. So that's the one that speaks to me. Um, the other one that I like is actually, I just caught back from, was it Definity? Yeah, it was Definity. And I actually was hanging out with John Liu and a, a friend of mine named um, Heidi Hastings. And I walked up to Heidi, I said, how would you like to be in the keynote? She goes, all right, good friend of mine. She's known me for a while. And I said, you're going to be doubling power virtual agents. And she says, okay. I said, okay, you got eight minutes. You're going to be starting at 9.06 tomorrow. It's like, are you going to tell me how? It's like, no, I'm not going to tell you how. I'll give you the URL and we're going to see if you can get it started. And if you have any questions, come back and ask me. And during dinner that night with John Liu and Reza uh, Rad and Layla, she actually got her entire bot working. So that was the demo that she did. And that's, that's how easy this stuff is to do. Somebody that actually doesn't have a lot of domain context and bots can get one working. So as I mentioned, we've actually uh, shipped lots and lots of new features. Rather than actually me walking through these, we're actually going to demo every single one of the new features that we've shipped since GA, except for skills. There's a Sydney Cider, an MVP named Arafat. I promised that he could actually do a drill down um, webinar on just skills. So we're going to cover everything but skills, I think. So with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and give our first demo, Reza Rad, who's going to take a look at some of my new favorite new features. Actually, I think he's covered all my new favorite features. And uh, I've got a list of URLs to actually paste in. So Reza, can you go ahead and share your screen? Absolutely. I love being called Reza Rad, by the way. Oh, did I call you Reza Rad? <laughs> <laughs> it's high praise. I mean, the guy is famous. It is. So Reza Durrani, I didn't mean Reza Rad. I was actually talking to Reza Rad this three this morning. So, ah, all right, perfect. We, we actually see your blog post. Perfect. That's all right. So the first feature that we will cover today as part of the demo is the new Power Virtual Agent Canvas Bot customization features. So this blog post was put out on March 30th. And this blog post walks you through the different settings that you can change for your bot. The canvas associated with the bot currently does not have any capabilities for you to go ahead and customize it or brand it. In my scenario, right now we are looking at a very plain, simple bot in action. And this bot goes ahead and uses a feature known as suggested topics, which allows you to pull Q&A information from any web page 
and pull them into your bot as suggested topics so that your users can start interacting with the bot. One of the channels through which you can deploy a bot is known as the demo website. And I'm actually leveraging the demo website right now to showcase my COVID-19 bot. And the first thing you notice about this web chat interface right here is it the, the branding is plain vanilla. So if I start my conversation with my bot, and if I say hi, it will trigger the system greeting topic and welcome me. And the next step is I can start interacting with the bot with my set of questions. So for example, I can say, what is Corona virus? That's the buzzword for now. And my bot will go ahead and leverage the trigger phrase, leverage the topic and post back the message to me. However, as you can see, the canvas for the bot is plain vanilla. It has the standard green color. It has the title on the top and it has the standard branding packaged in the web chat interface. Now, if you look at this blog post and Chuck has posted the link to this in the chat window, if you head over to this blog post, now what you can do is you can go ahead and create a very simple HTML file. And this HTML file comes with some standard styling already pre-created for you that you can leverage and change. It also comes with some additional features where you can change the name of the bot. And all you have to do to get started with this is literally just pl plug in the ID of your bot right here. So once you build your bot and you publish your bot, you can just grab the ID of the bot, plug the ID right here, and you have this HTML file that is ready to use. Now, what are the changes that I can make to the canvas? First, Obviously, you can change the icon of the bot. You can also change the avatar images that the bot interacts with, the user image as well as the bot image, and change the name of the bot. These are just some of the features that are exposed in the HTML file that you create. There is another link that has been posted by Chuck as well, and this one takes you into a more deep dive experience into all the available options for which you can change the branding. So there are a lot of different features that you can plug into from background colors to button effects to stack buttons to rich cards. There are a lot of options open here that you would have to explore. Now I just demoed this very simple plain canvas experience and in my scenario, I have gone ahead and created a very simple HTML file using that same blog post. And all I did right now is just plugged in the same bot ID and made a few modifications to my CSS. Now, if I play the same app with a modified canvas experience, I can create scenarios like these. So in this scenario, we are actually looking at that same bot. The only difference is I have changed the title of the bot. I have added a logo right here, and this is actually a GIF, so it's even moving. And at the same time, I have gone ahead and customize the canvas. So the board is the same. It's just the canvas that I have customized. I have another scenario in which I'm leveraging the same board, but I have changed the canvas in this scenario to brand it to look exactly the same as my Power Apps portal. So this case is actually a Power Apps portal and I have the same board experience right here. So if I start interacting with this board, if I start interacting with this bot, the experience is exactly the same, but I have this canvas branded. So you can see I have changed the title, I have changed the logo, I have changed the user avatar, I have changed the bot avatar, and so on and so forth. So a lot of these capabilities are now available where you can theme your bots or brand your bots based on your websites or based on your systems. The two key things to remember here is your HTML file has to be uh, has to be valid. That's number one. You cannot have any broken tags in there. And the second key thing that you need to remember is this file needs to be hosted in an anonymously accessible location. So you would have to host this HTML file on a standalone web app, and then you can leverage it directly in your different applications. Any questions on 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 the custom canvas, Chuck? Yeah, there was. There was actually about changing the icon, and yes. uh, I I showed that you did that. Um, that's yeah. also in the GitHub. There was also another great question 
around, oh, suggested topics. Uh, suggested topics was not relevant to what you're talking about, um, but wanted to know if we were actually going to extend that to do bulk uploads and actually having you read websites. And Thomas is going to cover that. Yeah. All right. Let's move over to the second demo for today. So this is one new feature that was recently announced. The second new feature is more or less in line with the first feature. In this scenario, once again, we are going to leverage the custom canvas. This time, not just to brand the bot, but also to start the conversation automatically. So as soon as the user interacts with a web page where this bot has been deployed, the bot conversation will start automatically. So rather than user interacting with the bot, it just starts on its own. This was one of the top voted features in the ideas forum in our new community site. And in this scenario, once again, the index.html experience or the HTML file is actually exactly the same as the custom canvas. The only difference right here is this section. And what this does, I'm going to try and zoom in for this one. And what this is, what this code does is it leverages the web chat container and it goes ahead and triggers a keyboard action that goes ahead and literally starts the conversation of the bot. And this in turn begins the system generated topic known as greeting. Now in this demo, I have a bot that I'm actually leveraging today on my website wherein users can come in and make requests to me for different blogging aspects. And in this bot, I have a topic that I have created called block topic suggestion. And I also have the standard system topic called greeting. And this is a topic that you can go ahead and customize. Now in my greeting topic, if I go to the authoring canvas, I have a message that I begin my conversation with, which says, I can help you with block topic suggestions to the author. And then I'm using the new topic redirection feature to redirect from this topic to a user defined topic that I have created called block topic suggestion. Now, if I head over to my website, I have a link right here which says suggest a video block topic. And on this page, I actually have that custom canvas deployed. And as you can see, the moment I landed on this page, I have not gone ahead and started any conversation with the bot. The bot has automatically gone ahead and triggered the conversation with me because of this new feature that I have added in the custom canvas. So rather than the user interacting, the bot starts the interaction and I can go ahead and get started with my bot experience. Any questions on starting a conversation automatically? based on the new bot canvas experience. Um, Alex Meyer asked, can branding change dynamically based on different topics? Can branding change dynamically based on currently? No. Currently, no. Hey, Reza, it's Alex here. I got a question for you. Yes. Uh, I, I just I just just uh, found out about these topics. So I was using them to kind of like reusable workflows, right? Like. If a, a user, if I, um, if a user, if I ask a user like, do they need a developer, and they always answer yes, and I push them down that developer topic, so, and it's reusable, right? So, yes, it's very, very, very convenient. So, what other uses have you seen for that other than creating reusable topics? So, topics in general. Let me let us cover that as well. I think that is one of the topics as well that we will cover a little later, but this is also related to redirection of topics where you build scenarios wherein you can redirect the users to topics that are pre-built within your bot. So we'll talk about that as well later. But any questions specific to branding or any questions to starting a conversation automatically as user as soon as the user starts interacting with the bot on a, on a web page? Okay, so I will move ahead to the next topic. And the next topic that I will be talking about is a new offering, which is the Microsoft Power Virtual Agents in a Day training. So just like we have app in a day, flow in a day, and dashboard in a day, now we also have Power Virtual Agents in a day. 
the link to access all the training content for Power Virtual Agents in a day is up, is available in the chat window. It is aka.ms slash PVA in a day package. And the moment you go ahead and download this package, this makes the following artifacts available to you to leverage. And what we go through the experiences, you will go through an experience of building your first chatbot. You will learn how to leverage topic suggestions, variables, entities, topic redirection, slot filling, and best practices for designing your topics. So how you would go ahead and plan your bot. All of these capabilities have been incorporated in this PVA in a day training experience that has been put out. So if you've not tried this out, please go ahead and download the content today and give this a try and provide us feedback. Any questions on the Power Virtual Agents in a Day training experience? Yeah, Douglas is asking, the PVA in a day training, is that public right now? It's not covered by the NDA. There's nothing in this conversation at all under NDA, Douglas. Everything is, is, is wide open. These are all things that you can get started with now. Even when I'm talking about us, talk, uh, us going out and doing adaptive cards in the future, that's actually already on the roadmap that we publicly announced. So there's nothing in this conversation. And yes, please do download the Power Virtual Agents in a Day that Reza is showing. So Reza was actually already built all of this stuff. And Barhead, Lisa Crosby has actually delivered it a couple of times in Australia. So great question. I think that was the only question itself other than adaptive cards. So, OK. So let's move on to the next uh, piece. The next one is the new Power Virtual Agents Forum. So if you've ever gone ahead to the Business Application Communities Forum, the link is powerusers.microsoft.com. We had three forums earlier for Power BI, Power Automate, and Power Apps. And now we have a brand new forum that has just recently gone live. And this one is the new Power Virtual Agents Forum. And what is the Power Virtual Agents Forum? This forum is a forum where, de where dedicated community users are available to help you answer questions, brainstorm, and have discussions around building and deploying your Power Virtual Agent bots. And in this community, we have dedicated forums based on every topic associated with Power Virtual Agents. So the first entrance in the community forum is the news and announcements, followed by the actual forums, which have been categorized into various topics from general to topic creation, to calling flows from Power Virtual Agents, to publishing your bots, bot administration, bot analytics, and finally, extensibility capabilities and the bot using the bot framework. So all of these forum categories or topics have been made available to you in the Power Virtual Agents community. At the same time, I want to also talk about galleries. We have a webinar and videos gallery available as part of the new Power Virtual Agents community forum, and wherein we post all relevant webinars and videos, and th these posts are made by Microsoft personals, Microsoft MVPs, and community super users. So please go ahead and check out the new webinars and video gallery, which is packed with a lot of good content from a lot of MVPs as well as Microsoft. At the same time, there is, an, there is a second gallery known as bot sharing gallery. This is one of the new features that is in the roadmap. And once this becomes available, there will be bots that would be shared in the community that you could leverage and import into your environments. There is also an MBAS gallery for Power Virtual Agent. So if you have missed out on the Microsoft Business Application Summit, which took place a week ago, go ahead and check out the MBAS gallery. This includes all the, all the sessions that were covered for Power Virtual Agents. And then last but not the least is the Power Virtual Agents Ideas Forum. So if you have any ideas, any feature suggestions, Please go ahead and post those ideas right here. The product team closely evaluates the ideas forum. And if your idea gets a lot of votes, 
there will be some action taken on it and just to give you one example here is an idea that was posted which says make the bot start the conversation which received 99 votes and i did not vote for it so let me go and vote for it and as you can see this feature is now available in the custom canvas experience which i demoed earlier so please go ahead and leverage the ideas forum as well in the new power virtual agents community and thank you so much for giving me this opportunity chuck uh reza before before we hand it off to thomas can you actually uh, don't, uh, uh, go ahead and stay sharing can you go back out to the galleries and open up the embass gallery uh sanjay sure. jara asked a question about um the embass sessions that we covered so there's yep. the embass gallery now by default i don't have it filtered but what I'd like Reza to do is go ahead and click on product. And then about uh, about seven or eight feet down in this list, maybe it's a mile down, it actually says Power Virtual Agents. And, and then you can actually see these sessions. I do not think, uh, Sanjay, that uh, there it is, Power Virtual Agents, that how do you actually call a CDS entity was actually called out. But if Thomas isn't covering that, I'll see if I can't grab a, an example. It is... Uh, I, I know Reza does this as well. It uses the O data syntax, and it's not as probably straightforward as what you think. So this is actually where you can find those sessions. If anybody is going to cover it, would be Marina, and and she actually did one on using Power Automate and Power Virtual Agents. But I don't think she actually covered uh, CDS Entity in that one. So, anyways, uh, Thomas, was there any other questions that I missed? Oh, uh, Sanjay actually asked you a question. Um, uh, Thomas, is there any resource or criteria on scenarios which help position Q&A makers versus yes, so that's, Power that's Virtual I, Agent? Yeah. That's <laughs> right, that's right. I, I think I'll cover this in a, in, a, yeah. um, in a moment. This tool is either available, I mean, it's meant to be used for external customers. So like to put this tool um, on the website, on the company's website to allow your customers to ask, for example, about their um, orders or to make a complaint or whatever. But on the other hand, you can as well use this tool internally for your employees, for example, to create a help desk uh, bot or any other kind of a bot. And when speaking about doing this bot internally, one of the most desired features that was not present in the first place is the way that we authenticate users so that we get the user's context. So the first thing I want to showcase you is that we can actually go into manage and we can configure this authentication in Power Virtual Agents. And this authentication can be done using any, at the moment, any existing OAuth.20 uh, authentication provider. So, well, basically, when we are thinking about those providers, we are thinking about Azure AD, and there is uh, a documentation created for you, which is very, I would say, sufficient to understand how you should, I mean, what values you should provide, how you should configure uh, an application in Azure AD. Just to just to say, um, when you're creating your own Azure AD application that will be used to authenticate a user or authenticate on behalf of the user, then it has to have those three scopes. So that with them, I mean, it has to have OpenID and user read. The user read all was uh, added because I also wanted uh, to have scenarios that is that allows me to uh, query Graph API. But anyway, if you want to create an app to authenticate a user and then get its credentials and its context, then you have to grant it those open ID and user read permissions. And then actually copy paste all these examples that are here because those examples here are actually written for, uh, for Azure AD and simply put them in this form. And then once you do it, you'll notice that you are having this authenticate action so that once we go into a fresh new topic, And we have this authentication properly configured, and you hit plus and new action. In just a while, you'll notice that there is a new action available called authenticate. So once you put it in the canvas and conversation reaches this point, it will actually prompt a user to authenticate. So let me show you how it works. I have this user data topic that actually is used to give users information about themselves, about their managers, and as well about their open tasks. Speaking about open tasks, what is 
done here and what was also the question about how can I integrate with the CDS, for example. So this example that is being used in this scenario um, is first calling Graph API. So this is an action calling Graph API to get the user context. And it's using this bearer token returned by the authenticate action in, in PVA to, well, actually get this user context. So to call Graph API on behalf of the, of the user who is, who is doing the conversation. And then once I grab the user profile, so I get the user's email, then actually I'm able to call CDS using the user's email and query their internal email address and get CDS user details. So later, I'm also able to get all tasks assigned to a user um, by, by providing this user ID. And what the flow is doing then is just filtering out all the tasks that have the responses so that were actually completed. And finally, is creating uh, using the markdown language a response that is being sent back to to the bot. So let me just put this small piece of information back to the canvas. All right. So now what I want to do is simply add here a new action that is called sorry that is called get tasks or get user tasks. And now what you can notice is that the um, the action actually is uh, expecting a one variable that is an input, which is this uh, auth token, the bearer token, and then it responses with two variables, which is the response, so with the user tasks, and information if there was any kind of an error, so that I could actually build then the logic around the bot to check if there was an error, then for example, ask a user, hey, would you like to retrieve re re this uh, operation or maybe just escalate it to a human agent? And then let's just display what was returned. So the response. Now, this is the moment where you have to keep our fingers crossed because just 20 minutes ago, this was not working. Okay, so what are my... So now the bot was triggered and it reached this authentication action. So it's asking me to log in. I need to intentionally click to log in, copy this confirmation code paste it in here, and this is where the authentication actually was done. So now I'm authenticated, the bot knows my context. Um, the variable with the, uh, with, the, with the token is filled in with my token, so I can actually say, okay, show my tasks. And now the bot is calling the flow. It takes a while because I have a lot of tasks, but hey, there it is. They, they, here they are. So I have all the list uh, with my open tasks with information, uh, how long they're waiting for my response. And I can actually just go to the task, open it and simply approve it or reject it. I mean, just act. So this is how it works with authentication. Do you have any questions for that? No questions. Okay. Now the yeah, second- Yeah, uh, I have one, uh, the authentication page it it was i mean it's a custom web page or is um a web page no, no, no. that it's, it's, comes out from the authentication so the, the page where you can see this validation code this a default one you, you can't you can't customize it you can't style okay. it if, if that was a question about okay thank you all right now the second thing that i want to show you is about the suggested topics so reza just mentioned it that we have this possibility to use suggested topics to let the bot auto-generate us a list of topics we can actually use for the conversation. Today, you can only use it with an existing public websites. Maybe somewhere in the future, you'll be able to, for example, upload an Excel file with the data. So I will just jump on to this uh, WHO website that has a very clear structure of questions and answers. And I'll use it as an in input to create my, my topics. All right, so now I have to start it. It will take a while, and I will use this time as well to show you another feature that was uh, lastly added to Visual Agents. So now imagine you're asking a question to a bot, and the bot is actually not able to understand it because there is no topic matching uh, the question provided by the user. So what will the bot do? 
Okay, I have a question maybe. So now the boy, because he's not aware, has no topic matching this question, will simply ask me, hey, I'm lost. I don't know what to do, what to say. Can you rephrase it? So I'll try to rephrase it with a lot of errors in my spelling. The body is asking twice to rephrase the question, counting on that uh, maybe it's the second time or the first time user will actually provide any keywords that will match any of the existing topics. But in a case for the second time, those keywords or the, the input is still not matching any of the topics, but will simply say, hey, I don't know what to do with that. I can escalate it to a human agent. Of course, if you do have the escalation, the human agent configured. But in the end, this default behavior uh, makes a user to simply write three times the same question, which I think is quite a frustrating thing. But there is this new functionality that is called a system fallback that is by default turned off. You can turn it on by adding this button. I'm clicking this add this button, and this will create you a new system topic that you can actually go and customize. So you can write here actually your own very own dedicated um, solution or maybe handler how the bot should react to um, the scenario when the when the user is typing something that is unrecognized and this fallback topic is going to be triggered uh, only after the first time bot is unable to recognize the input so now when I once I hit once I type the bot will actually trigger this fallback topic immediately. So this is how it works. And this way you can actually really handle uh, those, those situations that user is trying to ask questions that are not supported and avoid their frustration. OK, so in the meantime, the suggested topics functionality has been completed. So it has 24 new topics. And they're actually built based on the questions and answers from this very visible and vivid structure. Now what I can do, I can simply mark them all and add two topics. And this will actually move them from the suggested tab into the, into the existing tab. And right now I have a very simple Q&A bot. So now once I ask how COVID Okay, this can take a while. Maybe I'll just copy this trigger phrase to be to be very precise. But anyway, this should now work to actually that should work. Maybe the body is still learning the, the, the meaning. So in just a while, this functionality should allow me. Oh, sorry, I need to turn them on. That that was the, the that is the reason. So now I also have to turn on all the topics and therefore I'm able to use them in the bot. So this is how you can actually build a Q&A bot using the suggested topics. Very simple. That has just one question, one answer. However, you can as well engage Q&A maker. So I have created here the Q&A maker and I built the, Q the knowledge base as well built on top of, I mean, built from the Q&A uh, from WHO website. So I queried, I mean, Q&A maker queried the WHO website and actually extracted all those questions and answers into the knowledge base that I can actually use in my bot. Now, there is no way today to directly query the Q&A maker out of the bot. You have to go through, I mean, you have to use the middleware that is a Power Automate. So let me show you this second bot that is actually querying the Q&A. So what it does is simply, um, yeah, it's simply utilizing a new action that I, I mean, Power Automate action that is calling my Q&A maker using the HTTP requests. And sorry, not the, not the HTTP request, but the, the action to call the Q&A and is trying to find the matching answer to my question. So right now, once I start a new conversation with a bot and say, so 
that it should jump into this Q and into this bot. And for example, I'll ask. So right now the bot is calling Power Automate, that is calling Q and A, and that I'm in return I get I got an answer from my Q and A maker instead of just a fixed hard coded topic, and. You can leverage then this solution by, for example, adding a dynamic behavior so that if user asks a question that is not found in a Q&A maker, uh, you can, using the Q&A maker endpoints, add this, add this question to the, to the database, then train the database and publish the database. So in the end, the database is just expanding and it's learning uh, on, on users' inputs and then you don't actually have to maintain it on yourself, on your side, maybe just moderate something. Um, right. Is there anything else, uh, Chuck, I should cover or show? Or maybe there are any questions about how this Q&A maker works with, with Power Virtual Agents or... So, um... Actually, Foz is asking, you showed how to return everything in front of a user via authentication. What if I want to retrieve a user on another user? Does that make sense? Um, well, once you log out, because you can't, you can't actually authenticate the context of the, of the conversation with the bot, I mean, against another user. So, uh, by default, when you when you define this authentication using AAD, then if you're logged in into this in a in a session in the in the in the browser where you're talking, then well, that by default you're logged in. So what what you have only to do is to provide your I mean is to copy this this token. But once I go, for example, to a public website, so let me show you. Maybe this is something that you wanted to see. So once I go into public website and in the private mode, and now I ask user, uh, the bot. So when I hit the login right now, I will just have to go through the whole authentication procedure as when I was trying to log into my Office 365 account. if this was only working, but it is, okay? So right now... Actually, this is this is probably important. Why don't we pause just here for a second? So what this is showing is when uh, Thomas went out and registered this application to see what permissions it was going to have in his Azure portal, um, those permissions are now being prompted or saying, hey, you, you have to capitulate or uh, agree to give me access to these permissions. And what we could actually do is go out and use your Active Directory and your Office profiles. So we could actually go out and pull other information out, but depending on who you were coming in as. So uh, could you actually go out and list information from a SharePoint site or dwell or something? Yeah, if there is a flow action for it, he could get access to it. Sorry, and, Thomas. Right. So, so maybe this yeah. question was about actually signing out and signing in, because once you're actually working in a browser with no no context of your account, then you're actually asked to provide the credentials, and then you can sign in as a different user. Does it answer? And, the and, and Thomas. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I confused with. Uh with the login page you use in, in the test section when the system give you a, a number instead of the <clears throat> login page? I mean, it, it is the same. So once I log in, I mean, this this uh, validation code is simply to confirm that, um, to, to confirm this generation of the bearer token. But in that session, in that browser, the previous browser, I'm already logged into my Office 365 account, so I don't have okay. to provide my login and password because this first step of uh, OAuth 2.0 protocol is already done. Okay. But the second browser where I'm using this anonymous mode, I need to first log into my account. Uh, what was my password? Yeah, then. 
as well authenticate and confirm. And now once I actually log into my account, I will again see this page with the validation code that I can copy. Okay. And complete this OAuth protocol, I mean procedure. Uh, and, and Sergio, does that make sense? Oh, this should have worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, th thanks, Thomas. Right, it should work. But we're experiencing issues today, at least in, in Europe, we, <laughs> with the bot framework. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it just worked a couple minutes ago with this. So. However, uh, that number uh, is because you have multi-factor authentication and the uh, authentication code is asking to uh, type that code or not? No, it's just to confirm that I actually, uh, it's to, it's like that the app is authenticating on my behalf. It's my expression that I'm actually doing this, my yep. consent. No, but I think that the first thing when it asks you in your mobile device to uh, to to authorize that is because you have multi-factor authentication. Yes, yes. So, so in the anonymous mode, I had to use authenticator app because I have two two multi-factor authentication. That's that's correct. Yeah. Otherwise, it will not prompt you that you don't have enabled that. No. You just go straight forward. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so if I was if I was right, already logged in, then I would just see this validation code. Yeah, the validation code, which is just to. Uh, confirm that you want to proceed. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions about the Q&A maker? If not, then I'll just Hello. get it back to you. Just one quick question. Could you show quickly the, the flow? What what you need to pass to Q&A maker between PBA and backup? Sure. Um, let me just Sorry. find this flow because I don't actually have Hello. this. You see, Chas, I told you that once I start talking, I will be talking and talking. Now, these are important topics, so this is okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, and Thomas has done a video on this, by the way, as well. I'm going to go out and grab that. I think we have somebody with an open mic. I'm looking for their open mic first. Right, so this is a very, very simple flow. It asks, I mean, it expects uh, the question to be passed as a parameter, as an input parameter, and then it's simply uh, going to the Q and A and passing this question so that this action that is actually available in Flow by default um, is querying. I mean, it's triggering the Q and A maker that is querying this question against uh, existing answers and trying to match them. And then once it finds, it simply returns an array with all the matching uh, answers with their confidence. So what, what I'm doing, I'm just grabbing the first one. So I'm not, I'm not trying to do a loop and then check which one has the highest confidence. I'm counting on that the first one is, is the one that's, that matches the best. So this is that simple. And Thomas, uh, I put I put your video that you did on this um, okay. in the chat window. So everybody oh, should okay, have perfect. access to the Thank chat you. window. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for sharing that. Thank you. No problem, Jose. All right, I think just now you can take it over and show your your part of, of Demos. All right, um, let's go ahead and you have you stop sharing. Um, and what we'll do is, I think actually I had like three things I was gonna cover and we'll see if we can actually factor those a little bit. Um, all right, if I could get somebody to acknowledge the fact that they can see my screen, we'll actually see if I can't get started. You do. So you yeah. got it? Okay. So one of the questions that was asked, um, and I don't think Mariana covered this, so I actually I thought I would start there, is um, how do I actually go out and use a Power Virtual Agents to query, much like what um, Thomas is doing with Q&A Maker, query an entity in CDS. And what you do is actually go ahead and use that enhanced uh, uh, Power Virtual Agents calling a flow, which actually sets that trigger up. And this is the important part, right? Where is this? Um, why am I not seeing list records? It should be right here. Actually, I must have the wrong one. Here, let's go back to, I think list training does it all. And we need to go into our solution. Uh, anyways, that is actually all you need is actually, here, I'll go back and use this. And what you do is under list records, under advanced, there is a, um, a, a filter clause that you actually go ahead and put in. And 
this is your field trick class and he has EQ uh, field equals and then some value and you pass that into your power virtual agents. So I think that was fast that was asking that question. Hopefully that answered that. But so, let's just, sorry, uh, Chuck, one, one thing to add. Yeah. So whenever you try to call Power Automate out of virtual agents, just be sure you put that flows in a solution. So they have to be in a solution. They just cannot be uh, lying along with other flows. They have to be in a solution. That's a prerequisite. And, and one more new feature that got recently added is when you build a flow from the Power Virtual Agent, it automatically adds it to a solution for you now. So you don't have to worry about that fact as well. Yeah. Sorry, Chuck. That's I was going to say, that's the nice thing is, oh, here's an example of it. So here's that filter clause to go ahead and pull back. In this case, I've got uh, a column called new product, and I'm actually passing that in. And I didn't have to do anything. What Thomas is talking about is you see used to have, uh, has to use to use a HTTP trigger, and you have to pass back the JSON, and you had to manually put it in, in a solution. All that's done for you. That's actually now part of the new experience. Okay. I wanted to talk about channels. So uh, we actually have... Uh, Thomas actually had already opened up the channels, so let's actually do that as well. And when we first launched, I think we actually only had the first two rows. Um, I see that we actually have some of the, the product team. Oh yeah, so Keith Watling was saying is make sure he includes include the single quotes. So yeah, you have to concatenate it in single quotes. Thank you, Keith. Um, and we've actually added a bunch more, and then you'll see the, I actually tend to use this one uh, and the custom canvas and actually grab this. And then this gets me almost anywhere I want. What am I talking about gets me anywhere I want? Well, here's a great example. This is actually a canvas app. And if I actually go ahead and click on my looking for more trending content, hopefully he'll run. Come on. Oh, there we go. And you'll actually see that here is a my my bot that's actually running in a canvas app. Now, this is actually a feature that we're going to be releasing next month. And we're actually going to have a native control for Canvas app. What I'm doing right here is actually using a PCF control by Yash, who gives me the ability to do an iframe. Uh, in build next week, if you guys are going to build, we're going to show you how to build PCF controls. And we'll actually show you how to maybe go out and do some of the custom canvassing where you can go out and set your own icon um, as a property of that PCF control. Additionally, I know that Mike Carlo has been actually asking and are waiting for this piece. Actually, let me show you a different one. So what I've done here, that's not what I wanted to go to. What I've done here, or it's Visual Studio, there we go. Um, is I actually have put a bot next to my Power BI report so I could go out and, and, and interact and ask questions about a good friend of mine and Mike Carlo is actually on the call. Uh, she actually does a lot of medical um, Power BI reports. There's a lot of jargon in there um, and it, this enables her to answer it. Now, additionally, what I've done here, Mike, that you're gonna like is, uh, this is not the report. Where is my report? Here it is. And it says here, I can click on this to actually run the, the run a chat bot. So if I click on that, let's we'll see if it runs. What you'll see is actually a chat bot running in situ in my report. Um, now, if you guys are actually watching what I'm doing, the way I did that was I actually used the Canvas app to host the bot. So this is a actually a true ducking, right? So I've got a Power BI and a Power app. And a, inside of that is a bot. So I've got a three layer, three layer. Uh, so I can go out and ask. I think this is the same one that we're looking at a second ago. What is a MRN number? Let's see if that actually does it. Eh, it looks like it just failed. Um, how about hello? All right. So it's actually a different one. Oh, it's a different chat bot. This is my European chat bot. Okay. So that's actually some of the channels I've got to work. Some of the channels that you can use. And actually, as Reza showed, the sky is the limit, um, really. It, and one of the some of the new ones that we're going to come out with, even though um, Teams is already listed there, and you can certainly get it into a Teams, we're actually redoing that one, and going to make it much much easier to where you can go directly into your Teams and add your chat bot from their store. So that's actually something that the team's working on right now that we're going to get going. Um, okay, what was the next one that I was going to do? Oh, I was going to go out and show you uh, when we first went out and showed off skills. Most people actually wanted a, uh, a, a the ability to go out and call a topic from a topic. So if I go out and take a look at, I don't know, my doggies topic, and 
of anybody that goes out and look like I have a trigger phrase of caps for dogs. I don't know how that worked out, but that's okay. And what I want to do is if I actually walk through this, which is actually fairly incomplete, I want to do like, I think who was I was asking? I think it was uh, Jose was asking. I want to be able to re, no, no, it was somebody else. Um, I want to be able to reuse one of my topics again and again from all of my other topics. So what you do that now is you go to go to another topic. And this is actually something that we just added last month, uh, a month and a half ago. And I can see the default ones and I can actually go out and see, well, actually maybe this is a great example. So uh, Thomas was actually showing the authentication one. Maybe we actually have just an authentication topic that you use everywhere and you actually don't have to go out and do that authentication condition again and again and again. So that's a great example where I'm gonna go out and as part of my doggy one, go out and say, hey, I'm gonna authenticate you, then use the is authenticated variable throughout. So those are the, actually the two areas I was gonna cover. Um, let's actually see what else I was gonna do. Uh, topic oh, enhanced analytics. This is actually something I was playing with late last night. Let's go ahead and go out and take a look at the analytics for the Power, Power Virtual Agents. And this is actually really, really important in that after you release a bot, your users are telling you what information they want on a regular basis. If you go out and take a look at it, you'll see that um, it looks like most people were going through the secret um, topic, and then some people were interested in bikes, and uh, the, the less popular of this particular bot was, uh, was fishing. So that means that I should go out and spend more time on my secrets. What I would also do is if I were actually going out and doing satisfaction, um, in, in many cases we actually have, haven't turned on satisfaction in ours, um, I would go out and say, are they satisfied with it? So you may actually have two topics that are very, very popular, but one is actually getting a very low satisfaction score or a high abandonment rate. And you, that would be the one that you'd focus on. So the bot itself is telling you where you should invest your, in your next topics and where you can go out and fix those. Now, what I've done last night, oh, and why is this new? Because that was actually part of the original one. What um, Michael Vakoff has done is actually added a new tab for you to show you just your billing. So uh, why are they not all billing? It turns out you can go out and take a look at it. Actually, let's go out and show you the report I did. Um, uh, here it is. Um, and this report's kind of fun because this is actually looking at two different bots. If I actually did a bot for coronavirus and another one for influenza, um, I actually might go out and take a look at and compare is being, one being more effective or are people abandoning it in one area more than the rest? And now I talked about billing, right? So I could go out and take a look at my billable runs using, and how did I get this data? Um, I actually used the sessions and I went ahead and actually I'll just update that. I downloaded these and I dropped them into a directory. Now, the way I built this Power Virtual, uh, sorry, this Power BI report is I actually I'm just scraping that directory. So as I download new bots reports, I'm actually going to automatically see those. In this case, I actually have only got telemetry from two different bots. But if I actually added one for shoes or dogs or whatever the case or fishing, I would actually see the fishing bot just show up automatically because that telemetry was docked in that directory. So this is, a, again, a better together. This is how Power BI really adds a lot of value. And if you hadn't noticed, by the way, guys, these uh, reports, these are all Power BI reports. You can actually see the Power BI uh, watermark that just showed up. And all I did is I just built it myself. Um, and I was actually talking about the why are not all runs billable. It turns out if I actually went out and just displayed a topic um, based on a custom canvas, like Reza was showing me earlier, um, nobody engaged. You don't get billed for that. So that's actually a unengaged. And this is actually real telemetry data coming from our COVID bot. So a lot and a lot of people have looked at the, the web page that hosts the bot. It's actually gone out and inter interacted. Actually, let's show you that bot so you can actually see it. So if I go here and I go to aka.ms forward slash PVA blog, and I just wanna show you what's happening um, that's running all those. And I go out and run this page, this bot ha has been activated, right? So we're, we're gonna wait for a second. And you'll see that it has a custom canvas and actually went out and did a topic, just like what Reza Durrani showed us a couple minutes ago, but no one actually interacted with it. So it's an unengaged topic or an unengaged run, and that is not billable. 
So this is why I've got 1,133 runs, but only 162 of those are billables. Now, of those that are billable, you can actually see that most of those were just simply abandoned. Someone, someone went out and typed something in there and said, oh, okay, I see what it's doing. And then they just left. Very, very few people have gone in and gone into resolved. And it looks like almost nobody has gone out and escalated. Versus if I go out and take a look at my trending bot, you'll see the telemetry is far, far different. Um, there we go. So now I am just looking at just, oh, actually I'm not still looking at it. Let's do it one more time. Okay, now I'm looking at it and you'll see, oh, come on. I don't want select all. I want just training. Come on. Training. There we go. I only have 13 runs, um, but I have unengaged is almost practically none of them. If they actually looked at this bot, there was a reason and they in, in interacted. My resolution rate is far, far different, right? The other one was like 2% and this is 30%. My escalation rate, because people weren't getting their answers, is 23%. So this is compares two different bots, takes let you look at the telemetry and actually goes out and shows you how I could go out and improve one versus the other. And you can actually go out and see, in one case, I didn't even have survey data. That's the COVID bot because it looked very spammy. Um, but it, the survey data does seem to be actually helping people feel like they're actually interacting a little bit better. So it may be something that we add and see if it, inc it improves our actually our traction for that bot. Um, uh, if people are interested in this particular report, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to my friends in the Power BI.tips, and I'll have them actually upload it to Power BI.tips. So you can actually find this report if people want it at this URL. So, Mike, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this to you guys to see if you guys want it. So, um, so Mike says, heck yes, he wants it. So I'll send it to him. Okay, we're at the top of the hour. I want to thank Thomas. I want to thank Reza. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank John Lou for staying up till 3 a.m. Uh, Belinda for joining. Who else? Mike Carlo for giving me the scrim. This is actually the report outlet. Um, and see if there's any other questions. Uh, so it sounds like Sadria wants the report too. Um, Ed Gallagher says, thank you. And Diane says, this was great. Hey, Diane, it was a pleasure meeting you. It was nice actually meeting you virtually last yesterday. Uday, one of our trainers who does the uh, app in a day. Hopefully he'll be doing bot in a day going forward. Uh, hey, analytics Chuck? is only. Oh, Chuck? okay. So yeah, Belinda, Hi. hang on a second. Let, let me okay. read Uday's question. It says, is only for the last 30 days of activity. There's a job that deletes jobs older than. This is another great reason for you to go out and use those sessions and download that data so you actually don't lose that. So that is a great, great point, Uday, is that you want to use something like this or a data flow or something that captures that data so you don't lose that that legacy of where you came from or what the people had. Blinda, I cut you off. What was your question? That's okay. Um, I, I have a want, and I'll take Reza's advice and go um, put it in the ideas forum, but I would love for the bots to be able to connect to the Q&A in Power BI. Um, so Mike asked something uh, close to this, which was just to be able to put a bot into it. I've actually talked to Wukash Pulaski. Um, I think you guys should know him. The, Belinda is an MVP, by the way, guys. Um, and he's actually the one that owns those features. And I don't think it's actually going to be happening in this semester. So this is actually something the Power BI team is actually thinking about. I don't even know if it's officially in their backlog. And Wukash Pulaski owns these features if it's going to happen. So I don't think it's happening anytime soon. So I'll, I'll let you and Mike go out and beat up on Wukash and see if you guys can have that happen. Mike has actually written most of that code. So he's already offered to give it to, to Wukash. And all he's got to do is check it in, right, Mike? Just check it in. That's all you've got to do at Microsoft. True statement. Anyways. I got I got a sample ready to go. We we're ready to, to get a power virtual agent directly into Power BI report through a custom visual. So just I need to get talk to me, people. Let's get it working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and the reason the reason it's not already available and Mike hasn't released as a custom control is Power BI custom controls cannot write to their sandboxes. And Power Virtual Agents does require you to write to the, its local storage. So that's the that's the reason. Okay, guys, we're at the top of the hour. We're now a minute late. So I want to, once again, thank Thomas. I want to thank Reza. And uh, I think the next topic that we're going to be doing is Arafat on skills. If I don't have uh, Michael Vaka, who's actually going and doing a drill down into the analytics. So just an hour on analytics. But we're going to have maybe somebody like Joe Gill, who I see on there, or Sharon, come back. But I want to go out and talk about new features every single month going forward. So thank you very much, guys. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank Later. you. Thank you.